Well, good morning, folks. It is the morning of November the 17th. Is that right today? 17th? Sunday the 17th. Yes, yeah. Sunday the 17th. And I got my hunting buddy, Brett, my brother, with me today. And uh, we've had a good season so far. I shot a really nice whitetail, and uh, Brett guided his wife for probably a deer of a lifetime mule deer the other day. And uh, today, we are out because Brett's still got a tag and we're gonna enjoy the day, spotting and stalking. Don't care if it's a whitetail or a mule deer, our tag we is good for one, both. We have one thing that's gonna determine what we shoot today, and that's five and a half years or older. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Brett says mature, that's all that we care. So he may be 100 inches, but he may get an arrow. We'll he see might. by the end of the I've day. I've done it before. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen me do it. <laughs> so we're excited. It's just breaking day, we're going to start glassing. sure what he is we think we got his rack picked out in the CRP and more than likely he's got to do with him but we're gonna uh, maybe check with the landowner make sure it's okay if we can go in after him but we're hoping we can make a play on him he's in a pretty good spot we think we can get close enough to maybe give him a decoy and, and challenge him a little and see if we can't make something happen See how it goes. As 
as whitetails normally do. On November 17th, it's locked down. He had this doe locked down out in the middle of a CRP field, away from all the other deer. And now, it's just getting him to stay still long enough to get the distance closed in on. But, he's just running all over the place. We'd like to see him bed, but it's gonna be challenging. really crazy so this buck has been pushing this doe figure eight and all through the CRP draw and uh, the doe finally appeared at the top of the hill after coming in and out of the draw several times I knew that if we stayed put they probably would want to work back down in here she popped over the hill was coming right to us I stuck the decoy in the ground we got a heads up buck here we stuck it in the ground and uh, she came to five yards in the tall wild sunflowers in the bottom. 
I asked Brett if he was ready. He goes, I'm as ready as I'll ever be. He can't move, he can't do nothing. I can't move the camera. I got the camera all the way zoomed out. And uh, she was close. So somehow I got the camera picked up above the brush to turn because we heard the buck grunting coming up the bottom straight to us. And he came within five steps. He was five. He was five yards. Yeah, he's close. And I asked Brett if he was ready. I'm like, dude, you gotta be able to draw anytime because he's coming close. He put his ears back. He came, he locked on the new heads up decoy. Whew, Garrett row, baby. So I, I drew over your right shoulder and then I thought you was going to step over in front of me. I'm like, Don't so he draws beside the, on the right side of the decoy and I'm trying to get the camera over on the right side of the decoy. He goes, dude, you're in my way. So I like pick up the camera, go over top of the decoy all the way zoomed out. I hope like heck I got it. I couldn't even see the viewfinder. So, uh, anyway, Brett Cork's a nice one, a nice one. And uh, man, it went all the way through. It sounded good. Oh, he, it smoked him clear to the fletch. I the, seen that. The crazy thing was, is we just noticed that the exit wound was toward his rear. So we know that he hit him probably just inside the front shoulder. He was probably quarter and two, more than we think. Um, dead deer, he had his tail tucked. He was running like crazy. And uh, we just got to follow up the blood trail here in a bit, but we're gonna give him some time. We're gonna go gather some stuff and uh, gather our sanity here, so. Another heads up decoy moment, baby. Awesome, good job. Well, after reviewing the footage, we had celebrated, which is a no-no, but uh, we realized that Brett hit him just a hair back. It's about mid-body, the height was really good. He was quarter and two a little bit, and so the exit is right around the hind leg on the opposite side. So we're pretty confident he's got liver and then quartering back through into that back leg. He had a tail tuck, he hit the bottom and he's running. He went out of sight. We're gonna look for blood, look for the arrow and uh, give him some time. So we know the pasture that he went in pretty well. It's a good drainage and uh, he's probably gonna stick to the drainage, so hopefully he lays up. We're gonna give him probably four hours. Uh, liver hit deer, definitely wanna give him some time. So, uh, what was a high is now a nervous moment, so we're gonna start the search. Well, we've searched for a while, found good blood. We know the shot is good, but with a liver hit deer, we're gonna give him some time. We're almost back to the truck. We're going to grab some lunch and we're gonna come in from a different angle so the wind is right and we'll be able to glass a little bit. Uh, hopefully find him bedded up somewhere. He's probably gonna be expired any time now, but uh, like I said before, the shot, just, just to touch back, liver shot, real deep, dark red blood, really good blood we found. So we know he's gonna be going down pretty quick, but uh, the question is whether we find him or not. So luckily he went into a big cattle pasture with some drainages and cuts. We're thankful for that because he could be in a four foot tall CRP field. So uh, just get into the truck and grab some lunch and go see if we can't find him. Well, this calls for a huge congratulations to my brother, Brett. And uh, we had another awesome day of field together. And we uh, spotted this beautiful whitetail buck pinned down with a doe and a little CRP draw about a mile north of here. And uh, we thought we had him dead to rights, but we ended up getting in about halfway on our stock and uh, all of a sudden we see the doe pop out of the draw 
and she's out on the wheat field headed straight toward us. So we got a little bit of footage as they came across the wheat field and we thought it didn't look very good. The, the gig was probably up for the day. Uh, lo and behold, they fell into another draw mouth uh, just over that hill and uh, she must have been fairly close to ready to breed because he was chasing her all over the place. They ran clear up on top in the wheat and then back down in the CRP. And uh, Two or three times. Yeah, it was several <laughs> times in and out of that draw. And uh, as the lay of the land worked, we came down over the hill and we seen that they exited the first time. Then we seen where they came back in the second time. And I told Brett, I said, we need to get down through this bottom and get on the other side to where if they come down over this hill, they'll be right in our lap. And uh, ended up, they did come down in, but they were farther west of us. They took a big loop way to the north again. And uh, I told Brett, I said, I think they're gonna come back in here eventually. But my worry was, is that they were gonna go back north of us in another piece of the CRP and bed down. And uh, so we decided we were just getting ready to uh, peek up over the hill to see if we could get an eye on them where they were going to bed. And uh, we seen the doe pop back over, coming back down in. Uh, I had the heads up decoy on a stake down in the bottom of the draw and uh, my first intent was to get it down so that I could let them naturally come back down on the draw and maybe bed on their own. Uh, but it was too late. She ended up seeing the decoy, which ended up being a really good thing. Uh, sometimes when a doe sees a buck decoy, you never know what reaction you'll get. They'll either, you know, get a little nervous and go the other way because they don't want to be hassled or uh, in this case, she saw that there was another deer in the bottom and so she just walked straight to us. In fact, so much that she came to five yards in some really tall wild sunflowers and uh, all of a sudden we start hearing some grunting and of course the big boy was coming behind her and he had come over the hill just like she did, marched straight down to the bottom, saw the heads up decoy and ears pinned back. He was licking his chops coming in and uh, he basically took the heaviest cover straight to us and uh, the doe ended up kind of moving out of his way. Once he seen the decoy, he was, you know, he had his mind made up that he was coming to run him off. And uh, Brett was behind me, I had the decoy up filming and Brett was behind me, used the cover of me and the decoy to get drawn. And uh, we thought he was gonna take a left and then he ended up taking a right. And uh, Brett got the bow back and uh, he came to within like inside 10 yards, we think. Um, it was kind of a, a quick shot because it was such heavy cover. We had a small opening, so Brett pulled the trigger and uh, ended up hitting him. It was actually on this opposite side, but hit him a couple inches behind the front shoulder, but he must have been quartering to us just a little bit, and it exited back here by his hind quarter um, on the opposite side, but ended up being a really good shot. We could tell he was acting really um, funny, like he wanted to lay down. Um, he took a, a final... Uh, death run if you will and uh, he tumbled down here at the bottom of the hill but being that we didn't know exactly where the hit was we tried to look at it on video and and figure it out but we weren't 100 percent confident so we backed out we gave him two hours we ate some lunch uh, we actually took a big circle came in in a pasture on the opposite side of him and uh, got the wind in our face and just kind of hunted all the way up to where we thought you know we last seen him and uh, it turns out, I think he was dead in a matter of seconds after we last seen him. So again, super awesome hunt with the heads up decoy. Amazing hunt with my brother, Brett. Once again, we usually get together for a day or two <laughs> each year and uh, we're pretty efficient because most of the time, uh, even though we have a little bit of time to hunt, we get an opportunity at something. So it was no different today and uh, super thankful. Thank you to our wives for letting us uh, escape for a day and get out here hunting. <laughs> Thank you to our Lord and Savior upstairs to help us find him, help us place the arrow, help us experience this awesome country that he created. And uh, we are extremely thankful bow hunters today. So thank with you, that, Garrett buddy. Rowe, for the awesome <laughs> heads yeah. up decoy. I don't know Garrett Rowe, but I hear all kinds of good things about him. So yep. I know uh, they work unbelievable. Yesterday, or last week, uh, was it last week? What was it? Wednesday. Mm -hmm. This last week, Wednesday, I used a heads up decoy to uh, kill a monster mule deer with my wife. Yep. We decoyed him into about nine or ten yards as well, mule deer doe. Yep. And uh, they're definitely, definitely an, a very effective tactic on these rutting bucks. So, yep. yeah, so 
between Brett and his wife Molly's shots. Um, so Molly shoots a 206 inch mule deer at probably nine and a half steps. <laughs> and this guy came in inside 10 yards as well. So they have probably 380 inches of, uh, or 360 some inches of, you know, awesome rutting buck uh, in their lap here and just amazing, amazing for sure less than 20 yards of shooting yep. between the two yeah so <laughs> again thanks for the decoys thanks for uh the awesome experience and uh with that we're gonna close it we're gonna take some photos and we're gonna get home <laughs> <laughs>